Super Daryl Deluxe. Video games about high school are relatively rare, at least among Western developers. Which is a shame, because high school is a setting that has a lot of utility when it's used well. 2006's Bully was a great high school game because it used the comparatively small setting of a school building and the static cast of classmates and administrators to do a much more zoomed in and intimate take on the free roaming gameplay of the Grand Theft Auto series. 2015's Life is Strange was an excellent high school game because Max's personal development into being less of a doormat and learning to make her own choices instead of constantly doubting herself is exactly the type of personal growth that a lot of us undergo at that point in our lives. And the time travel and subsequent fallout from that acting as a metaphor for it is really good. And now I can include 2018 Super Daryl Deluxe in the pantheon of good high school games because of how it uses the aesthetics of high school in strange and delightful ways. The first thing you notice about Super Daryl Deluxe is how it doesn't look like anything else out there. This is a game made by two people, Gary Porter, who did the programming, and Dan Plate, who did all the art, with both of them sharing the writing. Dan Plate's artwork for this game is fantastic. The general style of the characters and the world they inhabit has a very strong 90s indie comic book or 2000s webcomic vibe, which is perfect for me because I associate both of those with my high school years. It's frankly cool as heck that just one guy was able to do all this. There's so much content and different enemies and environments. Uh, Daryl's cartoony running animation where he doubles back like he's doing the opposite of a Naruto run is just so funny and charming, and I didn't get sick of it in the more than 20 hours it took me to beat this game. It also threw the needle of tying a large number of different aesthetics together into a singular work. There are parts in the game where you'll have Ebenezer Scrooge interacting with the emo kids from the Paranormal Club or a kid in an Aruda headband coexisting with a 70s Dungeons and Dragons nerd as you fight a living hieroglyph in the next room, and it all just works and looks really cool while doing it. Super Daryl Deluxe is a self-described RPG vania about a high schooler named Daryl living in the aftermath of the collapse of a utopian world. It's a weird, wacky, magical realism setting where anything can happen and Daryl takes it in stride, wordlessly doing whatever insane tasks others ask of him. There's a Scott Pilgrim-esque league of advanced students led by evil school administrators bent on world domination, two bumbling con artists roping Daryl into their scheme to make money selling textbooks, and a school full of misfits and outcasts all eager to talk Daryl into helping them solve their problems and giving you plenty of excuses to traverse the worlds of the school's classrooms, fighting enemies and collecting doodads. There's some really good Bill and Ted vibes as you interact with twisted versions of each classroom subject matter, like Beethoven being forced to compose dubstep, or Julius Caesar being locked in a forever war with Ents spilling in from the English classroom next door, and the way that the game continually finds new ways to introduce and pair off different subject matter is really compelling. Games that try and rely on comedy are really tough to pull off, and thankfully Daryl just nails it. There are a lot of times when I actually laughed out loud at a particularly good line or sudden plot twist. The humor also goes in some dark places, and as someone who is relatively sensitive to needlessly edgy or misanthropic humor, I think it manages to pull it off. Uh, as an example, one of the first things you do in the game is get sent to pick some flowers to put in a student's locker. When you go pick them, it turns out they're cute and happy little anthropomorphic flowers that grow increasingly horrified at the realization that you've come to kill them. And when you put the flowers in the locker, it turns out that the student is allergic to them, and this was all you being manipulated into planking them. And then they get so mad that they turn into Donkey Kong, and it serves as your first boss battle. It's not quite in the same level as incinerating a bunch of orphans in Lisa the Painful RPG, but there were definitely parts of this game where I did a big oof when I realized what was happening or what the game was going to have me do, so kudos for pulling that off. I've given a lot of sugar to the art and writing of Super Daryl Deluxe because as much as I enjoyed the game, the actual gameplay is definitely the weakest part. It's not bad, I wouldn't even call it mediocre, but it has a lot of little decisions that just bring down the whole experience and make it frustrating at times. Probably the biggest offense is the lack of a simple, reliable basic attack. The gimmick of Super Daryl Deluxe's combat is that your repertoire of moves is fully customizable. As you collect and unlock combat abilities, you assign them to the face buttons however you see fit. There's no magic points or special meter, and instead your attacks all have a cooldown period where after you use them they become unavailable for a few seconds. So it's like playing a Castlevania game without a whip. You have these cool flashy special moves, but then after you do them you just have to wait for them to cool down and there's nothing else in the meantime. Later in the game it tries to alleviate this somewhat by giving you the ability to equip an extra set of attacks and switch between the two with the press of shoulder button, but that doesn't totally alleviate the issue. 
Also, your attacks have a fixed number of upgrades you can do to them, so an attack you get early in the game is going to be too weak to rely on later, even if you fully upgrade it, which is a bummer if you have one that you really gel with. The combat system has the potential for a lot of depth, as evidenced by the optional combat challenges you can unlock, but it never really clicked for me, and most of the time I would just button mash through it because it was faster and easier to brute force each encounter. While the fluff dressing up quest is funny and inventive, the quests themselves are all very simple and follow the same path. Go here and talk to this person, collect a certain number of objects by finding enemies, bring them back and get your reward. It gives the game a very grindy, padded feeling because thanks to the game's drop rate, you're basically going to have to farm the infinitely respawning enemies of the area for items every other time this happens. This, combined with the fact that the difficulty curve becomes pretty steep every time you enter a new area, means you're going to either have to be willing to sink in the time to grind or break out cheat engine, and either way it just causes frustration. This is a game where there were times when I just had to set it down and stop playing for the evening because I didn't have it in me to keep going, and by the end of the game I was actively ignoring all the side quests that were offered just because I wanted to get it over with. Traversal is rough as well. You don't unlock any real shortcuts or fast travel system until you're pretty far in the game, so a lot of the time you're going to be running back and forth between these large levels over and over again. The game has a real problem with signposting what you're supposed to do or when you're supposed to go there as well, and since Daryl didn't sell very well, there aren't any guides or wikis to look up. Most of the time I got stuck, I would find the solution in a Steam forum post by the developer themselves. Also, as an aside, this game has a co-op mode that was patched in after release. I gave it a shot and bailed on it after about an hour or so because the way it rebalances the difficulty made it too frustrating for somebody playing the game the first time. Also, it isn't integrated super well, so most of the time you're stuck in a zoomed out split screen that doesn't read very well unless you're playing it on a really big TV. But it's a testament to Super Daryl Deluxe that in spite of these frustrations, I kept playing it. I'm somebody that doesn't finish most games I start, but with Daryl I saw it all the way through to the end just because I wanted to see what happens next and what strange new sights awaited me. It just has that intangible spark that hooks you that not every game has. It's one of those times that trawling through lesser known games becomes so rewarding, and it's a real shame that it didn't find a bigger audience, because looking at reviews and talking to internet acquaintances that did play it, the response to this game is almost universally positive among those of us who have. So yeah, if Super Daryl Deluxe seems interesting to you, then it's well worth your time, warts and all. It goes for about $20 on the PC, Switch, and PlayStation. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please share it with somebody you think might also enjoy it as well. I've been getting new subscribers every time I put one of these up, and it's been uh, really heartening seeing your encouragement and kind words. Uh, thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, like a story,